Everyone get out! Hello tankers and tankettes, welcome to a mouse replay. This is one from the stream and I'm with Circumflexes. Now as you can see we're on highway, we're on the good side of highway, but things are changing a bit with this map. People are starting to learn that if you start on the southern so so uh, there, the southern so 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 the southern spawn point, apparently is quite difficult for me to say, if you start down there, then just rushing up the field to meet your doom on the southeast corner is a bad idea. But it doesn't really matter that much because this map is getting a major change in the next patch, which is fairly close now, patch 8.11. So this is an 8.10 replay, and it's going to go a bit how you expect, but not. It's also going to feature what is quite possibly the world's slowest flanking manoeuvre. So, I've done what I done in a previous video, I don't know if you remember uh, a viewer spotlight I had of uh, somebody's T95 gameplay, I believe that was Genosa. I've got myself a copy of the most recent Stornoway Gazette, and there's a couple of good things in there. Um, th there's one particular typo which I'm actually going to share with you right now, because there is a village on the west side of the island called Carlaway, and somebody in the Gazette, ha in one of the very minor articles has managed to misspell it as Carolo Way. So yes, well done the Gazette. They can't even spell the place names correctly. Anyway, to the game at hand. A lot of people are going into the city. And by a lot I mean that's the vast majority of the team. We already know from that 1375 doing a bit of what is, yeah, suicide scouting. We know they've got a lot of their top tier tank destroyers are just camping. The two Waffenträger E100s are actually platooned up together. There's a Jagdtiger, a WTF at the tier 9, and uh, there's an ISU, Rheinmetall, and a T28 prop. So they're all... This one is more dictated by the composition of the enemy team and the fact that none of those tank destroyers want to be on the front line, clearly. So they're all just going to sit there by the cap and defend, which is not a stupid idea. But you need sufficient forces to be pushing over the north for that to actually work. If you're just going to sit and camp there, then ultimately you're going to lose and that's what's going to happen. So I, I might be giving away like how this battle goes way too early, but it's some of you will or have already seen the results screen for this. I actually posted it on my Facebook page. I, I won't spoil the entire thing because there's a medal that is quite interesting that you don't often see on the mouse but it starts off being pretty much how you think it's going to be. Sircon is getting some early damage in there he's actually going to get a quite a high damage count I think he gets 6 plus K damage at the end of this. We know from various people suiciding from mainly from the 1375 we know there's quite a lot of the enemy team that are down there and a lot of them that are a bit further back and just camping. So I'm not going to press too far forward because you see from the render range there that I can't see them if they popped up but they can't see me either so the stuff here might be spotting me but the tank destroyers behind them aren't necessarily going to be able to see me to shoot me so they might try some blind fire but that's extremely unlikely to actually hurt and do damage. So there we go, that Yak Tiger just got annihilated. He was not really in the best position, because if you're in a position like that and people can just shoot your hull, you're going to die, especially in a tier 10 battle. This enemy IS-7, however, is in a much better position. He's actually just mostly hiding... Well, he's hiding his lower front plate. Can't even shoot his tracks, which is what I'm trying for there. And it's literally just his uh, turret and part of his upper front plate showing. And that is going to be really hard to pen. I mean, we've got artillery, and artillery is the only person that can hurt that guy right now. Because anyone rushing down the slope is just going to get annihilated, like completely wiped out. There's at least four tank destroyers camping at the back there. And yes, we've taken out their, um, their Jagdtiger, but the Jagdtiger was you know, by far not the most dangerous thing on the enemy team. So this IS-7 just bouncing all of the shells. I'm actually switching to HE, and you might think 128mm HE shells would not bounce, even on an IS-7. Well, you're about to be proved wrong. So here we go. That one missed totally. 
And he actually just took a big hit from artillery there. I think Sircon put one in him. In, 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 in. Sircon put one in him as well. I am speaking so well today. And there we go. 128mm HE shell just bounced on the turret of an IS-7. HE doesn't bounce, you know. Uh, yeah. So I'm just trying to do a little bit of damage. And if this had been... If the enemy team composition had been different... I mean, we're 5-3 already. We've killed some important enemy units, including their 110E5. But if the enemy team composition had been different, had there been uh, tanks attacking over the north-west corner of the map, then... We've only got one person defending. Now, our our Waffenträgers might have been able to get back in time to defend, but even so, they're not exactly the most heavily armoured target, so stuff shooting them would probably, you know, if there were sufficient numbers, they would probably kill them quite easily. So this is looking like a complete stalemate at the moment, because anyone going down over the, the this slope here, they're just going to get nuked. Okay, there we go. The IS-7's down, and that was artillery that had to take him out in the end. But, uh, yeah, it, it's just... We could just sit here and it would be a draw at this rate. Because these guys on the enemy team, they're not moving. They're just sitting there. Now, you see here, IS-3, WZ-111. Extremely ill-advised. Look at this. Bam. Gone. Evaporated. And the WZ uh, is exactly, you know, the same thing's going to happen to him. Boom. Gone. <laughs> That's why you don't go down over the field when you know there's that many tank destroyers waiting for you. For some reason, they thought... I don't even know what they thought, but they they paid the price for it. The ultimate price. Well, in World of Tanks terms, anyway. So at this point, I think I said something like to Sircon, like, I'm actually going to have to go round, aren't I, in a mouse. And Sircon stayed where he was, because if they push up the field, he's... He's the only tier 10 there now. There's a Lerva and a T-34, but if they pushed up that corner, then the Lerva and the T-34 wouldn't last very long. But they, they're they not going to. They're just going to sit there. I think by this point we've guessed that they are just going to sit there. So Sircon stays put because he can put out a lot of damage very quickly. There's a Lorraine who looked like he was going to flank, except he's gone in the river for some reason. The Rheinmetall is... The one that was defending our cap is actually now advancing across the field. And... Yeah, there's that Lorraine. Just... What's he doing there? I, I don't know. But he's now dead as well. And there's the two Waffentragers. And I think... I'll just have a quick check. The ones on our team are in fact also platoons. So there was a pair of Waffentrager platoons on each side. Well, there was a pair in the battle on each side. And they were platooned. Or, I, I know what I mean. I'm making all of the sense today. So here we go. World's slowest flanking manoeuvre initiated. I think it's time to get to the Gazette now, because th this might take a few minutes, as in, as in, like, a good few minutes. So on the front page, there is a big, there is a big picture of the, uh, the freight ferry, because we have separate freight and passenger ferries at the moment, the MV Clipper Ranger, and um, basically it hit Stornoway, or rather it hit Stornoway Pier, which sounds a bit less dramatic, but still, there is now a, a reasonably sized dent in the side of the boat because apparently they lost power when coming into berth and actually uh, just um, gave it a good hard uh, uh, a spang into the pier and just yeah that's going to take some while to buff out I can tell you. Uh, there's also a bit on the front page about archaeology, a 400 year old boat, the remains of which they found on a beach, which you'd think that would be fairly unlikely, but actually, when you get timbers and stuff buried in sand, they can actually last a surprisingly long time. Um, flicking through, there's um, a bit of controversy about turbines, but when is there not? Somebody's house got damaged by lightning, and presumably they lost a lot of their electrical appliances as well. Uh, let's, let's see, just before Christmas, and somebody, somebody's, uh, yeah, their house in uh, Bernera. And it was left with a, a large hole in the roof and extensive damage to the chimney. So yeah, I bet that was fun. Uh, diesel generators stolen, apparently. Uh, in South Uist, two diesel generators were stolen because apparently somebody felt they had insufficient diesel generators in their life. Oh, this is a fun story, one of which I have personal experience. As you may or may not know, I am currently on uh, various 
benefits. And um, for a while there, numbers were kind of stabilised of people around here who were on benefits and looking for work, but it appears that it's going up again. So, unemployment rates falling across Scotland, but it's rising in the Western Isles. That's because there's no bloody jobs, basically, which I know all too well. We're approaching the... Um, across the river, by the way, you may have noticed. That rhyme at all, unfortunately. Alone and unsupported, so, yeah. I think that was, like, artillery was, like... Yeah. Woohoo! Artillery loves those because open tops, very thinly armoured. Yeah. But I've got the WTF E100 with me, or I've got one of them. And we can still see. We know there's a Centurion Trace in K7, or K6 rather, so we know there's what, a Centurion there, but the rest of the tank destroyers, they're all still just camping. And it looks like it's just this T34. I'm going to be cautious though, because enemy artillery can still hurt me. Uh, let's. Have a quick look through and see if there's anything else of interest. Oh, the Monaco. There is a boat that has been, for about ten years now, tied up in Stornoway Harbour called the Monaco, which was like a pleasure cruiser. And there was some legal dispute and basically um, it, it's just been sat. Uh, but basically nobody's wanted to claim ownership of it. And wow, that shooting Jedi. GG. And it's just been sat there and it keeps sinking and keeps having to be refloated by Stornoway Harbour Authority. And they got a bit fed up of this, so I think they've used some powers to... They've basically decided that at this point it's just uh, a pain in the butt, and it's actually being broken up as we speak. But apparently they're going to use some of the oak from it for uh, making whiskey barrels, so it's going to be of some use in the end. Although I imagine it's not going to be the external timbers, because, you know, marine anti-fouling paint would give the whiskey somewhat of a... Uh, a flavour, a strong flavour that maybe would not be uh, to everyone's taste. So, yeah, I, I don't know, it could be a unique selling point, but probably not. Also, the carcinogens would um, maybe put people off drinking it as well. Oh, there's an ISU, and I'm more concerned with the Waffentragers, because a pair of them could annihilate me, even though I, I'm in a mouse. I could get some nice bounces, but... And, oh, there we go, I'm getting... Um, well, well, I've been spotted, somehow. I think we can put the Gazette away, by the way. There's not that much interesting in it this week, but... Um, there's, there's one or two things, but... Nah. Anyway, anyway, back to the battle. And I'm still failing to shoot things. And you see that I've done an absolutely rubbish amount of damage in this particular battle. I've, I've not had much to shoot at, to be honest. And I lobbed a couple of HE shells in the IS-7, one of which bounced, but... Oh, oh, oh. Hooray! 1,072 damage. That's just an amazing amount of damage for a tier 10 tank. That's just so awesome. Oh no, he shot me. I'm down to a mere 2,122 hit points. And there's artillery. So, the ISU's down. Uh, we've basically won this now. And I can get this guy, right? No. No. I really can't. Okay, this was such a good game for me, right? This, this has been, like... How do you even... Not that I've had that much opportunity to shoot at things, like I've said, but bouncing on an artillery, that's that's uh, jingles-worthy, dare I say it. I know I'm not going to get to do any damage against the lone remaining Waffentrager, so... Okay, reload, reload! No. Okay. Okay. GG. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, I did what you're supposed to do in a mouse. You're supposed to push flanks, you're supposed to bounce the shells, and sometimes take the damage so the other people can do work, the other people can uh, have the space in which to do the damage themselves, which is what it, precisely what I was doing for that Waffentrager E100 that actually came with me. But in this case, if it hadn't been for the result that you're about to see, uh, well, are seeing right now, I wouldn't have showed this. But yeah, the unexpected medal that I mentioned earlier is a patrol duty medal. It, in a mouse. Now patrol duty is, if you uh, need reminding, it's if you're lighting up a certain number of tanks that your your allies are doing damage to, basically. I can't remember what the minimum is. It's five or six tanks. And you have to be the only person that's lighting them up whilst damage is doing being done to them, or something along those lines. But yeah, because of that, because of the fact that it was 5.4k spotting damage, and it was pure spotting damage, the I actually got 
a better score than Sircon, even though Sircon did, like I said, over 6,000 damage. I'm still not quite sure why Sircon didn't get top score in that battle overall, but yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's Mouse OP, Scout Mouse OP. I, I don't know, I really don't know. Heavy Scouts are best Scouts, clearly. So yeah. Yeah, it wasn't that exciting a match, but the result was such that I thought I actually would record this and show it to you guys and gals, because you don't see patrol duty in a mouse every day by any means. So if you did enjoy this video and my little excursion into the Gazette once again, you can hit the like button, you can leave a comment below, you can subscribe to my channel, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.